In this fourth lesson on introductory statistics, we'll cover a t-test comparing an average with an accepted value. In the last lesson, we developed the idea of a confidence interval, and we said that true value lies within a range of our absolute value, and we could set the limits for that range by finding a value from the student's t-table at a certain probability and multiplying that by the standard deviation for the measurements in a, a small sample and dividing by the number square root of the number of measurements in that small sample. Our concept here can be represented on a number line if we have the measured value on this number line. Then if our average value is at this point on the line, what we're doing is drawing a boundary or a setting a bracket, a range, around which the average value is centered and around it, within which we say at a certain probability the true value can be found. So very common idea for setting the confidence level is to use a 95% probability level. And so what that's saying is that 95% of the time, the true value falls or within this range. Now this same idea gives us an opportunity to check our method of measurement occasionally with the use of a control sample. And by that, I mean one sample whose concentration or uh, content is not known to the analyst, but has been prepared or is well known to another person. So this person provides the sample, the analyst does the analysis, uh, multiple measurements, and calculates a confidence interval. At that point, we can check to see whether the true value falls in the range as predicted, or if it falls outside the range. If it falls outside, then our system is under suspicion, and the validity is called into question, and maybe we don't have something under control. Let's go back and find out what the problem is. Maybe one of our solutions is bad. Uh, rework the system. So it's a very valuable thing to be able to do. There's another way of looking at the same idea, which uh, is very popular, and uh, it introduces a few new concepts. And that's to apply a procedure called a t-test. And there are several types of t-tests. In particular, uh, we are doing this for comparing an average of a small data set with an accepted value. And by the accepted value, I mean the mu or the true content of a controlled sample. So the question is, there a difference in comparing the average that we get for the small set and the true value? So is there a difference or are they essentially the same? So that's the question we're trying to address. Now, statisticians have a particular way of discussing this, and sometimes the language that they use is confusing for a new person learning this type of t-test. And so I'm going to discuss this in a more intuitive fashion, and then later we'll go back, once you're on firm ground, and fill in the language that the statisticians use. So let's take a look at our confidence interval. The idea comes right out of the confidence interval. And I'm going to do some rearranging here. Let's take the difference between the true value and the average value and take the absolute value. Everything on the right hand side now has to be positive. So our the right hand side just becomes this term. I'm going to solve for t in here. So t 
is equal to the difference divided by s times the square root of the number of measurements. So if you look at this uh, and think about applying this to a controlled sample, we're going to be able to calculate an average value, and that's based on a known number of measurements. We'll also be able to calculate the standard deviation. And when the true value is revealed to us, or the accepted value is revealed to us, we can take this difference. Everything on the right-hand side then can be calculated. And we'll call that an experimental value of t. Now the test proceeds by, once you've calculated the experimental value for a given probability, and again, a, a common uh, level probability would be to calculate this at a 95% confidence level. So once you've done that, you should be able to look in the table and say, well, what is the T value at 95% confidence level? for that given number of measurements. So we have a table value, or some people call it the critical value of t. If the experimental value is greater than the table value, then there is at least a 95% chance that the difference is significant or is a systematic one. In other words, more likely that this is due to a real difference and not just random error operating. Let's try to clarify this concept about making this decision. Let's imagine this rectangle represents the probability space for making this decision. Part of this space is occupied by the conclusion that they are different. The other half or other fraction of this space is the conclusion that they are the same. So there's some boundary between these two and we're trying to decide whether the idea that they are different occupies more than 95 percent of this box. So if this is the scale for the probability that they are different, we're trying to apply a test in this case to say that is that boundary at the 95 percent level? Does this part of the box, the difference conclusion, occupy 95 percent of the box? Well, if that's true, uh, this line might represent the probability they are the same. If we draw the line at 95 percent that they're different, the probability that they're the same is 5 percent. So if our test shows that the experimental value of t is greater than the table value of t, then we succeed in saying that that line lies here at 95 percent or to the right that there's at least 95% chance that they are different. This area is more than 95% of the probability space. If t for the table turns out to be greater, we fail to draw that line here at the 95% level. And that's saying the line really lies somewhere to the left and that there's at least a 5% chance, maybe more, that the two are the same and what we're seeing is just a result of random error. Let's apply this to a real example that should help make it more concrete. So let's imagine that we are interested in determining a drug metabolite and it's uh, urine samples that we're taking so we've taken multiple samples or replicate samples of the same batch of urine and we've done multiple measurements on this metabolite and we get numbers like this for the number of parts per million for this metabolite in the urine sample. We can easily calculate an average from this. I'll just give that to you. 
carrying an extra digit here, and a standard deviation for this data set is also in parts per million of that metabolite. So we need to calculate an experimental value of T. So it's the difference between our accepted value and our average value. Our colleague now reveals the sample was prepared with 50.0 parts per million of this metabolite. So we take that, the absolute difference in that, and 52.08 we divide by our standard deviation 1.409 and take the top, multiply by the square root of the number of measurements. So we've got one, two, three, four, five measurements. We get an experimental value of 3.299. So now we need to bring in the table of students' t value. Let's Imagine we've already decided that we're going to apply this test at the 95% confidence level, and we have an N of five values. Now, of course, our table is in number of degrees of freedom. So since we've taken an average, the number of degrees of freedom here is five minus one. We've removed one of those degrees of freedom or four degrees of freedom. So we're interested in this row and the 95% confidence level is this column here. And we see that the value, I've written over it, but it's actually the table value is 2.776. And we see that the experimental value is greater. T experimental is greater than t table. Therefore, we conclude that there is at least a 95% chance that the difference is systematic.